Vampire is actually an interesting game. Combining RPG with adventure game mechanics all wrapped up in an epidemic system that forces you to constantly consider what effect your actions will have on the small world you found yourself in. It's actually fairly clever how all this stuff works, but it leaves some things for you to discover on your own. There's some pretty interesting stuff going on in the background of this game, and some stuff that might be confusing. So I figured I'd slap together a little beginner's guide to better explain how this vampire business works. This is Eric, and today I'm going to run down 8 tips that'll help you out in the early to mid game goings on in Vampire. Uh, let me know what you think, and if you think you've got some better tips, then just throw them out there. Any assistance is good assistance when you're just trying to get by on the rotten streets of London with a mouthful of teeth and some extra biteable necks everywhere you look. Let's get started. So with most RPGs, experience is used to level up. This game is a little different however, as your main source of experience is completely optional. Drinking the blood of innocence is how you get the most experience, but it also leads to complications that I'll get to a little bit further down. Your level is very important, and you'll find that your main quest will quickly outlevel you if you're going to try to avoid sucking a lot of blood. And the only way to increase your defense against enemies is through leveling up, so there's no armor or ways to increase your defense. Oh, and uh, never embrace a victim when you first find them. Wait to find out more clues about them and then complete investigations until their blood level is completely full. Then bite them. You know, if you want to. So here's an interesting mechanic. Early on you'll find that the only way to level up is to go to bed. Now, going to bed also has the effect of speeding up time to the next night, so every time you go to bed, time passes. When time passes, things generally get worse. So if you haven't been curing sick people, then they'll get worse. But if you have, then the condition of the district will improve. Basically, you'll want to spend as much time as you can collecting resources, uh, doing investigations, and progressing through the game until you feel you have to level up to continue. Also, uh, when you rest, most research containers will refill, so that's another plus. So just don't sleep too much. You got stuff to do and it'll make your life easier in the long run. Now every time you choose to suck someone's blood, you're gonna leave a dead body somewhere. This is just unavoidable. You can't just suck out somebody a little bit. You have to kill them if you're gonna suck their blood. A critical side effect of this is that dead bodies in the streets cause the epidemic to spread. So you're gonna see a lot more sick people in the district if you killed somebody the next day. Relatives or loved ones might go out looking for revenge, some stores might become unavailable or items become more expensive. I just assume that if you kill someone, it's gonna have an effect somewhere or to someone. Now the more people get sick and the more you kill people, the epidemic will just get worse, and the stability of the district will increase. When a district drops below critical, then you're in trouble. All the quests you can get there will be gone, and the area will just be swarming with hostile enemies. You can't talk to anyone, and you can't get any blood out of the people who remain, so just be careful. Try to avoid that. So, this definitely surprised me. Fighting is actually kind of tough in this game. If you want to go through the game killing a minimum amount of civilians, you can get by fighting enemies that are tougher than you. Actually, you can fight enemies who are much tougher than you, like way higher level, and you can still get by, but the, as their level increases, so too does the damage they inflict on you. So there's a few skills which can really, really nice to have from the get-go. Obviously you'll want the healing ability, I think you have to get that. And the claw and blood spear are both very useful. An interesting thing about the blood shield is that it doesn't cost any blood. It's got just like a really long cooldown, and it only lasts for a little bit. It stuns enemies who attack you, and it's just really handy if you're weaker than the opponents, it's like it just stops them from hitting you. So once you've gotten 4 skills, and I suggest you get 4 skills as quickly as you can, you can unlock an ultimate ability. Get one of these as soon as possible, as they're, they're free to use and they just have a really long recharge. So I think the Abyss ultimate is the best one, but I mean just personally, as it allows you to do tons of damage and stun a target, and it works pretty well against bosses too. So this is something you might not spend much time thinking about at first, but it's actually quite powerful. Upgrading your weapons is a very useful alternative if you're not overleveling your enemies by drinking blood. With a good upgrade weapon, you'll be able to even the playing field against much tougher opponents. I like using a one-handed weapon in conjunction with a stake or any offhand with a high stun damage, as it allows you to easily drink an enemy's blood and take advantage of your blood abilities. Now, for upgrading, you're going to want to take advantage of merchants. It may look like 
all they sell is junk, but weapon parts are most commonly found being sold by them, and they restock every night. Different weapons require different weapon parts, but don't bother with weapons that can't be fully upgraded. If you can't get to purple, which is level 4, it's just a waste, so get rid of it if you can't be upgraded all the way. So, my suggestion is to use a one-handed weapon, an off-handed stun weapon, and a shotgun. Upgrade a shotgun with damage mod and you'll be able to do a lot of damage, even to bosses. So you're going to want to talk to everyone, like, I mean everybody, about everything. Check every dialogue option and read every note you find, as these can also provide hints. The more hints you find, the more you know about people, the more experience you get from drinking their blood. And even still, finding out about people can sometimes lead to new investigations, which can also increase blood quality as well as earning you experience without having to eat anybody. Helping people out also improves the status of a district, so basically it's all just a win-win. Just talk to everybody. So early in the game you'll get a quest to go to Whitechapel. If you haven't been going nuts the only way a vampire knows how, you know, by eating people, then you're probably going to get pretty severely underleveled. You might think that you've run out of things to do and you're just going to go back and eat some of the low level people in the hospital, but actually what you should do is return to the docks. There's weaker enemies there and some new investigations you can do as well. There's also less innocent kind of innocent people if you know what I mean. If you're having trouble early on, just go to the docks. So every NPC has a mesmerized level, starting at level 1. There's 5 levels of mesmerization that you can unlock, with level 6 NPCs being plot specific, as in you just can't kill them. To actually increase your mesmerized level, you have to just complete main story missions. Basically, you'll go up a mesmerized level after completing each main section of a chapter, usually involving a major character in the story that you'll have to deal with in some way. Uh, regardless of what you do or how you deal with them, you'll gain a mesmerized level, so that'll allow you to hunt higher level targets. There we go, and that's all I got for Vampire. There's actually a lot more to talk about in this game than I first thought, so I'm just going to keep going and see what else there is to find. Hopefully you found some of these tips helpful, and uh, have a good one, guys.